What is going on everybody? You got Tone here and I am back bringing you guys the playoffs. The MPA Miners playoffs are here. We have made it to the last 12 teams, so to speak. So yeah, this is, um, we have made it to the playoffs. We finished the regular season. The eight weeks are done. We finished the season five and three with a plus one differential. Good enough for second in our division and the fourth seed overall in the conference so we will be playing our um a wild card game and we will be taking on all right cap and his toronto swap blue jays in a rematch from week number four where we also came away with a 2-0 win in that game on the back end of triple taunt between Gallade, crobat and my drapion this time though i'm expecting um the game to be a lot lot different from the first time considering the fact that um, he knows my he knows my sets. He knows what I like to build with, so it's going to be a lot more trickier to actually make a usable team that can counteract his team of eleven. So, um, with that being said, I'm just going to jump right into the the build the team builder, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, from the last time, Cap's team is still the same 11 Pokemon from before, and our team has also changed significantly. We no longer have the Blade, Kabutops, or the Torterra. We have Tangrowth, Agron, and Lantern in its place. So, things make it are a lot easier for me this time around, as opposed to last time, considering how much I despise facing off against Manaphy because my only response at that time was Unreckle Fable. This time though, I do have another response with my Tangrowth and also doubles as my ground resists, so that's also nice to consider. So um, with all that being said, I'm just going to jump right into the team builder because uh, this is actually a little bit going to be a little bit behind because we actually played this on uh, Tuesday a few days after the deadline so I'm a little bit behind I have to I want to at least try to get this up before um, Friday um, by Friday at least and of course the battle will be on Saturday I want to get this up while I have the chance to still record this so yeah so jumping it right into the team builder here uh, just for a refresher from the last time the last time we played cap I brought a taunt toxic um, Poison Jab, Knockoff, Spadef, Drapion, Taunt, 3 Attacks, Mega Gallade, uh, Wish Protect, Toxic, Moonblast, Unaware, Clef, uh, an Assault Vest, Diggersby, a Flyinium, Z Crobat with Z Brave Bird, also has Taunt, and a fifthly defensive Rough Skin, Rocky Helmet, Stealth Rock, Drudigon. This time, though, the team is a little bit different. Some of the sets have changed and all that stuff. Um, before I go any further, I also want to give a quick shout out to uh, Jolt for helping me um, fine tune the team and whatnot, go over some flaws and whatnot. Uh, the EV spreads are are mainly mine. I just tweaked them a little bit from the last time I played Cap, but some of the sets are the exact same actually because I couldn't think of any real adjustments to make. Uh, maybe a little tweak in the EV spreads, but that's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, so let me just run down the team I built for this time around. So first off, you see we have our Drapion with the Citrus Berry, Battle Armor, with Sword Stance, Taunt, Knockoff, and Earthquake. Uh, changed it up to be a little bit more offensive due to the fact that I can taunt his passive stuff, like the Fortress, prevent that from going for Stealth Rock or Spice. I can taunt the Pukamuku. I can taunt on Invested Gligar and all that stuff, prevent them from going for Rocks or setting up or anything like that. Um, then I can Sword Stance on the Switch, um, do a little bit more damage with Knock Off or Earthquake. Earthquake is better for me than Poison Jab because Poison Jab only hit Gardevoir on his team, his only real Poison Weak team, his only real Poison Weak Mon, and everything else is it's kind of meh again. So Switched out Poison Jab or Earthquake gives me the more gives me the better coverage of the two moves, and more importantly, it prevents Tyranitar from just freely switching in. On my Drapion, while at the same time I have the um, ability to hit it with an Earthquake, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the EV spread is more or less the same as last time. I just took a little bit out of Special Defense and added it to Attack. The 12 EVs and Attack ensures that a knockoff from from my Drapion at plus two will always one-hit KO a Gardevoir from full. 
a zero bolt guard over from full to make that more um I should clarify that a bit more. So yeah. So the calc for um knockoff from my Drapion at plus two to a zero bulk invested guard of four is a hundred percent minimum. So that's pretty cool. And then of course Earthquake to hit the um Tyranitar uh mainly the T Tar uh Lola Marowak already gets um crippled by knockoff, so that's nice. So and the citrus berry is mainly there so I can get back up to a reasonable of a reasonable amount of HP because Drapion, like before, is my response to his Gardevoir prevented from at least spamming Psychic or Psy Shock at will. So that is the Drapion. Moving on to the next Pokemon, we have the Diggersby. So Diggersby has gone from being a Soul Vest to being a win con in this battle. Um Sorry about that. Uh, so the idea behind Diggersby this time around was the fact that um, looking at his team as a whole, the combination of Earthquake plus Ice Punch actually destroys his entire team with the exception of maybe like a max HP, max defense fortress, which isn't that difficult to wear down considering its lack of recovery. And then um, shout out to Joe for suggesting Quick Attack. On my Diggersby because of the fact that the fast the Pokemon that are faster than Diggersby, mainly Gardevoir, Raichu, and Excelgore, are very frail on the physically defensive side. So if I'm able to get all of them to a reasonable amount of HP, like about 60% or 65% actually. Then a quick attack from an adamant max attack, huge power life orb Diggersby can take them out, which is actually pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy thinking about it. Um, so basically, if I'm able to get up an agility and I get some chip damage off on stuff like Mega Venusaur and I have some stealth rock support, depending on his team, I can actually just dis um, go through the entire team with Diggersby alone. And of course, quick attack is just here sort of to pick off um, Gardevoir. Weaken Raichu, weaken Excel Gore if they're in a weakened state, and also gives me something to hit those Pokemon without having to get up an agility first. So, uh, EV spreads very straightforward max attack, adamant nature. Uh, 124 speed is here for it's enough for adamant max speed Tyranitar. I don't expect him to be his Tyranitar to be Scarf this time around, and the rest is just putting in special defense so I can take special hits a little bit better from stuff like Excel or or whatnot. Well, Excel Gore barring focus blast. Let's leave it at that. <clears throat> and of course twenty nine IBs in HP to hit a life orb number so I take less from life orb recoil. Um so that is the diggers be the main win con of the team. Next up we have for the first time we're bringing Tangrove, so very, very excited to use Tangrove again. Um rocking the assault vest, power whip knockoff, hidden power of fire and earthquake um, again, very straightforward, Tangrowth is my response to his Manaphy, and at the same time, it can take a plus 3 Ice Beam. Retaliate with a Power Whip, Power Whip is here with Giga Drain, in the off chance Manaphy is like a Calm Mind variant, I can at least do more damage to Manaphy in that manner, knock off again. To get rid of items, mainly it's here for stuff like Marowak, I can knock rid of choice items and whatnot. Hidden Power Fire is mainly here for the Fortress, and I guess you can call it my strongest move to hit Mega Venusaur, even though it has Thick Fat. And then Earthquake just rounds out the coverage by hitting the Tyranitar without having to eat, without um, easing prediction. I kind of went back and forth between Earthquake and Sludge Bomb. But I figured that um, Earthquake will be a little bit better in the long run. So the EV spread just simply max HP, max special defense, sassy nature, maximize Tangrowth special bulk and all that good stuff. So that is the Tangrowth. Next up we have the Clefable with the leftovers, Stealth Rock, Soft Oil, Toxic, and Moonblast. The idea with Clefable, now that Dragon's not on this team, I can use Clefable to just get up rocks and weaken stuff with Moonblast. Toxic is here. For the Pukamuku, I really wanted to bring Calm Mind, but if he brings Pukamuku again, I can't do anything. I can't set up against it and all that stuff. So it's going to be a much of a pain. And of course, Moonblast is just a pretty spammable move in general. I just can't do much to the Mega Venusaur again. I consider putting Psychic 
for a while of a toxic, but I figured um, at least putting a Pukamuku on a timer, if he does bring that again, is a lot better in the long run than hitting me to sort for a psychic and doing pitiful damage, because um, I'm uninvested, there's no life form or any of that stuff. So, the EV spread, it's still the same as the last time. Um, Clefate, with the HP and the special defense investment, with a calm nature, I can take a Z Surf from a Manaphy in the rain from full. That is the idea behind this Clefable set. So, um, that's it. Clefable's job is just to get up rocks and try to pressure some mouth stuff out with Moonblast, put stuff on a timer with Toxic, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, now, moving on to the last two Pokemon here, we have our Crobat, Flying EMZ. Uh, essentially, I think it's the exact same set and EV spread. I didn't really feel like modifying things any more than I should. I can't outspeed Excel. I cannot outspeed Excel or unless I'm Choice Scarf. But I feel like Flying EMZ is a lot better in this case, so I can do a big chunk to the Manaphy, to the um, Mega Venusaur and whatnot without having to take any massive recoil at that time. So it's still I have to still have to pick and choose in terms of when I pop my Z move, but at the same time I'm still pretty confident in my Crobat. So it's adamant max attack, enough speed for max speed timid Raichu, and the rest is just spread out between its HP and its defenses for some slight bulk. And lastly we have our Mega Gallade, which is again the same the same set, taunt three attacks with close combat and headbutt ice punch. Um, to hit the Gligar, I don't really need anything else in terms of coverage, because like, um, like I said, Glade is more of a, um, softener to stuff like the Fortress and whatnot, as you see, I only, I'm only packing fire coverage on one Pokemon, and that's my Tangrove, so, not saying that Fortress is not an issue, it's just that Fortress is not the most difficult Pokemon to wear down, especially considering that, my entire team, for the most part, is going to be physical. Like, my special attackers are just down to Tangrove and Clefable, which are not running any investment whatsoever, so I have to be um, pretty cautious of that. So, yeah. So, again, Max uh, Glade's EV spreads very straightforward. Max attack, max speed, to at least speed tie with the Raichu and outspeed stuff like the Manaphy and whatnot. So, yeah, that is a team builder for round one of the playoffs. Um, this will be up on Friday, of course. Um, sorry if it does feel a little bit rushed, in a sense. Um, but we didn't play this game until Tuesday, so I did have to rush the builder a bit, because I didn't have time prior to um, making this, to actually take the time to record this, so... Um, and the days afterwards, I don't have any time whatsoever to do any recording, so trying to get it out the way and done. Um, but again, this will still be going up on Friday, as always, and the battle will be up on Saturday, so I hope you guys are looking forward to that as well. So, that's going to be it for me, guys. I'm going to get the heck out of here, and until the next time, guys, my name is Anthony, a.k.a. Tone, and I'm going to catch you guys on the flip side. Later!